The program that we do, it's called Circle of Courage, um, and we take the model, uh, Circle of Courage model. Um, because we started it last year, the first thing that we really focused on was the sense of belonging and just making a really strong, tight group by meeting once a week and going to cultural uh, uh, activities and, and planning activities and learning um, and just really trusting each other and just it's given um, the kids a real sense of belonging. And what we're working on now is just what, and she probably doesn't even know that <laughs> technically that's what we're doing, but like we're meeting about mastery, which is finding out what uh, their, their, what their personal goals are, what they're good at, what they want for the future, what their hopes and dreams are. And uh, so we've been doing that like with the personality test yeah. and, and discussing what their passions are. And so we're just going around generosity, independence. And so I'm going to let uh, Tiana talk about that because we do th other things within our group um, that have been quite awesome. So some activities that we have done in our group are like healing and talking circles. Like uh, we did like two healing circles in the past and it just helped us like the other members of our group get a stronger bond and talking circles just like when we need to talk about something. And we mentor other indigenous like children and we teach them how to make bannock and bead and just like teach them about our culture mm -hmm. and then we also plan events like they're our tp talks and like the tp talks were just about um some students in our aboriginal class would make like indigenous themed stories with like lessons behind them and then some members would read the story and show the kids like two games that we learned from a, a conference, that, a conference yes. <laughs> that we went to and the kids really enjoyed it. And then for like the bigger kids, we had an elder come in and share like some of their stories. Yeah, yeah it was a month. We did it for the month of um, January because it was storytelling time. So it was really, really neat. We had a teepee that was um, set up in our foyer, mm -hmm. and it was it was huge. And that's where we would gather, um, and we would gather classrooms uh, at a, one classroom at a time, and then tried as much as possible to get our our leaders, our circle of courage leaders, to do as much as they could, which they did. They did a lot of the planning. They did a lot of the. They spent. Um, a lot of time. A in lot that of teepee. time in that teepee, <laughs> and it was really neat though because, and even explaining the teepee, like explaining, um, you know, first of all what it was made out of, and just talking about you know that, but also the 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 uh, you know the the poles and the different meanings of the poles and the, the direction that the door is to go, and so it was kind of neat, and we would actually learn more when the elders would yeah. come they would share something that we didn't know um even after taking that in your aboriginal studies class yeah. it's like oh we learned some new things so it was really really cool it was great yeah because it was a time for our, us to teach but like learn and it, yeah it was really fun it was fun i enjoyed it a lot it was and um it was neat because when we didn't have uh when we weren't doing anything in between classes, I would find the Aboriginal, um, or sorry, the uh, Circle of Courage kids in the TV. That's just where they felt yeah. connected and gathered in there. And um, we would smudge. Um, a lot of times, there, uh, it would be there, they, the elders would smudge. And so it was just, I think, a safe place. I miss it now yeah. that they took it down. When they took it down, it was kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, we hung out in there during our breaks and stuff, and it just made us feel like it made us feel like we were being represented. Yeah. And like it made us feel like we were noticed. Because mm -hmm. it was cool. Yeah. Like, I mean, all kids would go home and were telling their parents about the TV yeah. and about what they learned and about the cool games. Like, um, 
I don't know if you were, wait, did you hear that one, the mom mm -hmm. say, talk about how her son went home and was trying to reenact some of the games that they had learned mm -hmm. um, at home. He was trying to do it. So it was, that was really cool to hear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was neat. And I think, I think what, for me, uh, I'm learning. So I'm by no means, I'm learning and it's, I'm, I'm not just learning, but it's making me, I feel like a better counselor, a better educator because I'm, I think it's just such a beautiful, amazing culture. And so many of our students at the school, uh, it represents who they are. So I think it's just created so much more, uh, acceptance. Yeah. And I remember I asked the girls, I said, well, what, what has, uh, Circle of Courage done for you? Like, how has it changed you? So for me, um, it like, I was always shy in my classes. Like, I wouldn't participate as much. I wouldn't ask questions. I would just kind of be quiet. But I found that with this program, it helped me, like, want to learn and ask questions. And it help, actually helped my studies more. And with the other members, I found that... Um, she opened up more. Like, she was very closed off at the beginning, and she, like, didn't really like to share her feelings. And then as we got to, like, just share with each other more and, like, just bond with each other more, yeah, um, she opened up to us and showed her emotions. So that was really yeah. cool. Yeah, I tried, uh, Tiana, a lot of times, she is the keeper of the circle, so <laughs> leads the circle, and I think it's just, there's just a sense of trust. Like we know we trust each other. And so because of that, the healing circle, the difference between the healing circle and the talking circle is that it brings up things like that. Maybe they're going through, there was some, some issues between friends and yeah. it was a, an affecting actually a student coming to school. She was missing and it was affecting her marks and affected the whole group. Yeah. And that, it was really cool to see how it worked. Like, yeah, it was cool to see, like, the circle actually do what it's, like, said to do. Yeah. And, like, just being a part of that journey was pretty cool. Yeah. It was neat, hey? Yeah. And then also, now we're taking it a little bit for, and we're starting to talk about things, like, about what reconciliation is and about the generational hurts and how that has affected them and what that means. And I think um, those are hard things. But I know one thing that was really cool was from that group, I actually had, a, I've had students in the group come to me with individual things that, because it brought up some hurts and it brought up some stuff, and then they took it one step further and then they felt comfortable coming to talk to somebody about it, which they would never have done. And so then it's about, okay, what can we do to make things better for them? Um, and they're part of that solution. So it's that's been really, really cool. Um, I love that because that's where I can fit in. That's I feel like that's my part in this is to be there and to help with that healing. Um, and also, like, I, I just feel like it's just, it's very empowering. And do you feel like that? Because yeah. I feel like, um, you know, the oppression... And, and that even women, you know, and then indigenous women too, mm -hmm. like I'm a woman, but they're a visible indigenous woman and talk about like how we just talk about like we, you know, what, what is it to be assertive? What is it to be, what is your role? What is like, and, and, and it, it's contradicts what society, I guess, has always or has been telling us. So I see what I see, what I have viewed is these girls coming into their own. Like Tiana is a leader and she's not just a leader. She is a teacher. So she like takes, like she has no problem at all. I don't have to like, I can give her a task and she's just self-directed and she just is like, she's come into her own in that confidence to do that. So um, making Bannock with her, her mentee and now these mentees are other indigenous kids who need to have that connection and a lot of our kids surprisingly and I found this out I think you probably we've something we've noticed when we've gone into classrooms because we'll go into classrooms and talk about mm -hmm. the culture 
is we'll say how many of you would identify as First Nations or um, some say they're native, some say they're, you know, indigenous or, and there's a lot of kids where we can yeah. tell they are, but they don't know that they are. Yeah. Right. Like, like they're visibly, or they'll have the last name yeah. that we know they are First Nations. And that was like kind of shocking to me yeah. because for me, I always like just knew from a young age, I was First Nations and like these kids, they looked like you can tell they were First Nations and for them to not like be proud and say like, oh, I'm First Nations was kind of shocking. So like, I'm really happy with this program because it's letting me know that I can teach these kids and help be a role model for them <laughs> and like just help them be proud of their culture mm -hmm. because it is amazing. Yeah. And it was so neat to see, like, you see some kids, well, when we did this in the TP Talks, too, they'd be like, I'm First Nations! Yeah. I'm First Nations! And it was so neat because, yeah, like, there was a time when it was, like, not... And these yeah. girls have said that, where they just didn't feel um, like, proud of their yeah. culture. Or they maybe felt it inside, but they didn't feel like they could share that pride it. with other yeah. people, right? Yeah. So that's... That, to me, has been really exciting to see how we're changing that because I'm seeing it this even from last year to this year. Yeah. More kids are like, I'm First Nations. I'm First Nations. And we, then we talk about how beautiful the culture is. And we talk about that. Um, and I think it's different because Tiana and her sister, they come from a home where it was very, it's very supportive culturally. She's had some great influences in her lives yeah. all throughout. So her, her Gukum, you know, and her mom, like they very consistent with their, like the storytelling, sharing and, and teaching and wanting it to go yeah. to the next generations. And so that's what really I see, not my role, but their role being so much is like, this is what I want to do with my kids. We have to keep this going. We have to keep sharing this, our stories and our culture and our way. And if they don't do it, then it just gets lost. And we, I, we see that yeah. with some of these kids that aren't. They're not taught or there isn't that sense of pride or they're just in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And we want to take away from that so just the survival mode and say, you know, like, it's okay to be like this. Yeah, and be yeah. your best. Like, be, like, celebrate who you are. Yeah, because I like being First Nations now. <laughs> yeah. Um, with this program, I have actually learned about myself that I actually know a lot. Like, I still need, like, have more to learn. A lot to learn. <laughs> but I do know a lot, and... I get to share that with the younger kids and sometimes the older kids mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's cool. I like that I get to share and like be a part of this, be an active role, like have an active role in this program. <laughs> and before this big initiative started, before all the FNMI, before it was even when, when Tiana was like in grade six, <laughs> in grade five she would come visit me and she would just just for fun like a, during break she would come and she would share things and I would like interview her and for my own and we would just like talk about like when you become a woman yeah and all these really so I we didn't know back then that it was going to evolve into this but she it's just been a natural she's just a natural leader and a natural <laughs> teacher even when she was like five and six that is like a desire of hers and she did teach, like she is still teaching me, like they are all teaching me, but I just think that is just to have that opportunity in school to be able to do that is, uh, for me, I feel very, very blessed and honored to have them in my life and to have them as my teachers, so. If I'm honest, like with this, like, group, I found that. I have like a sense of belonging and if we didn't have it my high school life would be really stressful for me like this is a great stress reliever for me I find and 
I find that when we don't meet as much, I get kind of lost and like stressed and like I find that my like all the homework I get just kind of floods over me and then I just like shut myself out mm -hmm. and like this is nice because I get to talk about it and like I'm kind of like my mom where I like to talk about my feelings it just takes a while to get there mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It helps like with our like healing circles and talking circles. Yeah. Um, another thing with Tiana, she comes from a family with oh, six girls. Six girls all together. Yeah. And she's the oldest. Yeah. So there's like lots of lots of uh, responsibilities, lots of different things at home mm -hmm. too, right? So I just think uh, it just gives her a place to find out what she as an individual who mm -hmm. she is yeah and I think that for all the kids like I think it's about finding their individual strengths mm -hmm. because they might not all be like Tiana but each person in our group brings something really neat and so we have to when we because I've had admin come to me and say could you you know include these you know yes you know we don't want to be an exclusive we don't want to be exclusive we want to be inclusive but at the same time let it happen organically because we have brought those that are struggling into the group, but it's still very, it's got to be like on a real yeah, safe, like, trusting. We started this group, like we were all already friends, but like we weren't that close. And um, we started it off like as being friends and as like the year passed, we brought in like, a few more people now, right? Yeah. 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 We've added some younger ones, which is really good mm -hmm. because that's what we want is for it to continue. For it to like carry on. Because and for these guys to mentor the younger ones and to grow leaders out of them, right? Yeah. So like I find when recruiting like more people, it has to be, it's like a slow process. Yeah. Because, and it's organic. Yeah. It's like if there's a need, like we have a girl that just last week Tra or two weeks ago tragically lost her sister so we're gonna do a feast and we've invited her and do to do a, a talking slash healing circle just to talk and she's so excited because I think she's also a student that's been very isolated like she's kind of been on her own and even though we've been invited she's just kind of stepped back yeah. but through this opportunity uh, like Tiana is going to help with lead that, but what it, what that feast would look like to honor her sister. And mm -hmm. uh, and a, that's kind of a talking circle. Just And in that talking circle, it's not like a, a it's not a counseling session mm -hmm. uh, at all. We don't counsel each other. Different, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just like support, right? Yeah. Like support and I don't know how else, like just sharing your feelings and your thoughts in a non-judgmental, mm -hmm. everybody is on the same level, there's nobody that's, there's no, like, power, hierarchy. yeah, hierarchy, or, yeah, we just like, accept each other and listen, and a lot of times we cry, <laughs> yeah, um, but it's, it's just a really safe place where people can get that support, so... That was really cool. So she, we're doing that next week. So that's how organic it is. It was just, there was a need and it just fit with what we do mm -hmm. and our heart because part of this is generosity and belonging. You know, everything with the circle of courage, that is what, that is just organically, that's just what we do. So they might not even know, oh, we're working on, you know, this is gener. They just yeah. store, get, they just do it. It just becomes part of, and it translates into their everyday life, right? Mm -hmm. At home and at work, and and uh, yeah, like I just see these kids growing so much because of it. Yeah, like I see the other girls. Like I'm a year older than them, so I can like see them progressing and like how they change, and just witnessing that is like. It makes my heart happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It's really moving. Really, yeah. it is. It is. And it's like, a, I don't think any of us really thought that it would get, that it like, would turn into this, this, but it's just developed 
yeah, into this really cool, I don't even want to say it's a program, it's just relationships. Yeah. You know? And uh, in the context of their own unique issues that come with being, you know, on the reserve, mm -hmm. for the most part, most of you are, and mm -hmm. most, and, and not just that, but the, 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 like I said, the generational stuff and the, the cultural, you know, the reconciliation. Like there was a lot of people in our group that didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Reconciliation and why do we do all this? So it's just, I guess, really just uh, support and empowerment is mm -hmm. what I would call what we do. Yeah. And that's the neat thing about having a K to 12 school is we can do stuff like this, yeah. right? So kids that are, are kind of needy or, or maybe uh, there are some kids, younger ones that are being raised with um, their japas or their gukums and lusums and they don't have the younger, right? So it's just, or, or missing um, their mother and need a f another female role model, right? It's having them be that female role model to help them with their own identity, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that through this, um, like I have nominated uh, Tiana for an award, for two awards, for the Shining Star, the St Indigenous, Indigenous Shining, Shining Student, Student Award, and also for the Leaders of Tomorrow Award. The Leaders of Tomorrow Award is not an, in, in, an Indigenous award. It is for our community mm -hmm. as a whole. So I'm not, an, I'm not nominating her because she's First Nations. I'm nominating her because she is a leader. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that is success. Success is seeing these kids become leaders. And not only did I, so I know what they do. So yes, I can sing their praises, but I've had other teachers because now they're involved in like student council. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they want, she wanted to nominate her and I'm like <laughs> already done. Right. It's like, but that is so cool to me. And it's like, I don't have to try to get letters from staff. They all want to write her a letter because she's a leader in general. That to me is success. <laughs> right. And to see a student come into my office that never would have and say this is what I'm going through is success because they I they I've known them their whole time at the school I've been here 15 years and they've never come here but now that yeah. they started coming and they trust me and they know this is a safe place they're coming with really big things that is a su success to me right and when little kids and like are proud of their culture or they know that they're first nations and they're proud of it. And other kids are like, whoa, you're First Nations? That's so cool. Yeah. Like, that is to me. Like, I mean, a lot of it's just the fruit of what we're doing. You can see the fruit, right? And that's the reward. I just feel more, like, accepted in the school and, like, recognized as a person. And, like, even my sister, she, like doesn't normally like to do things like to participate into like the school what would you call it like the uh, the spirit, culture the culture of the school yeah. like like um like when we were little we always felt like different we always felt secluded i guess and excluded hey? excluded yeah um i always felt like just i was this like i always knew i'm still kind of shy but um, when I was younger, I was like really, I was really shy. And this program helped. I like using my sister as a reference because I get to like see how she grows as a person. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't really see it because like, I don't really see my, like sometimes I see my progress. Like I see, like now I'm more confident to like participate in my, like math studies especially because I used to have like trouble with that but now I'm like confident enough to like ask for help from my peers and my teachers and it also this the other teachers they're also like encouraging like ribbing skirt making and um beading mm -hmm. 
and sometimes they have panic making. <laughs> and so like that, it makes me, it helps me to realize that this school cares about my identity and cares about like me learning all this stuff, which is great. Um, so that would just be like the awareness and like realizing that we have gone through like genocide, I guess, mm -hmm. and we have like hurt, but like mm -hmm. now is the awareness and like learning to grow from that and mm -hmm. flourish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's well put. I think for me, because I do the mostly the social emotional stuff, I think it is, um, that just means giving them the dignity and the opportunity to celebrate who they are. Mm -hmm. And I want that for all the students, but I want to give that back to them. And I feel like that's what's the most important is to, to do that. Um, and I want them to then take it back to their community and be leaders and to grow people, a new generation of people that will feel that same dignity and pride and that they will see their best potential, that they will grow that way. And I think that's where it starts. It starts with these, this, with these guys. And also I think it's really good, I think changing um, changing the way that other cultures or other, you know, others see First Nations people mm -hmm. is really important. And I think that there's just a not knowing. And so making it like this is our Canadian history and this is, you are a part of that now. And like just educating them is, I think is really neat to see because they don't, a lot of it, they just, they don't know. So I think making it a part and available to everybody because it is our history. Yeah. It's our Pinocchio history. You know, it's what makes us unique. We live so close to Masquachis. And uh, I think it's just, it needs to be, it needs to be talked about. Um, and there needs to be as many opportunities just to do it in an, again, a natural way mm -hmm. where it's just part of their education where it's part of the way that we celebrate mass or we celebrate, you know, um, like with, with, with their smudging or feasts and just making it really like a natural part of our, our culture at our school. Like our school culture is important. And I think it has actually made other people, it's not like it's exclusive to other cultures. It's not exclusive, like it's not saying it's a better, or it's not, it's, a, you know, the other, the other kids are like, it's, it's saying, you know, it's also that message of be proud of who you are, mm -hmm. right? Like be proud of who you are and know who you are. They need to feel pr proud of mm -hmm. and, and like learn from their elders. That's one thing that we're missing that all cultures miss is that storytelling and that connection with, uh, with their, with the seniors or the yeah. generations of, of the past, right? It's like, they need to do that. Like that's something they can learn from as well. And that's something that we encourage when we have mm -hmm. elders come and talk. Well, I hope it like just basically becomes like second nature, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. to like where everyone just like knows about it and appreciates it and then we can just learn from it yeah my hope would be that teachers would know yeah that every teacher that comes to our school that this would be part of their education because i find that's my my um i don't know if it's not really like a struggle but it's my challenge right now is to create like what we're learning, what I've learned, I've learned from the, like, they need to know this. They need to understand, 
like there is, I'm surprised at the lack of understanding. Not, they just don't know. Um, like, uh, how do you, what is protocol? Yeah. Right? Like, how do you, what, what does that look like? Um, why is, what, when a girl goes, is missing for a week out of school because like she's become a woman, happened? what happened? Why instead are of, they doing this? yeah, instead of getting on them because of their attendance, like, like that is my wish is that yeah. every single teacher that that will become part of their education and become when they work in a school, especially a school where there's 33, like our school, 33% First Nations kids, they will know this stuff and that it'll just be an organic part of everyday education for yeah. them. It's like it can just, because they can look out and they can vis visually, they can see the First Nations kids in their class and include that and draw that out of them and as well as other, you know, other cultures, yeah. but to make it, uh, to celebrate it, but to really know. And I think then it won't just feel like it's just T Tiana and our group and, and myself and Mr. Prediger and your mom, Ms. York, doing Aboriginal studies. Like, it'll be everybody on board speaking the same mm -hmm. language, doing the same things, right? Like, yeah, just to have everyone included and just to have, like, the whole school want to, like, be a part of this and, like, I feel like it would help the kids a lot mm -hmm. because I do know that some of the First Nations kids, because, like, they might not know about our group. Yeah. Or they know of it, but they don't really know about it. Right. I feel like they feel lost. So I feel like if this were to, like, be known across the school, mm -hmm. that it would help them. Because it helped me. Mm hmm So. Yeah. Yeah, like I would have, I would love to see more, like participants, more mm -hmm. people, more more adults, teachers involved because it's, I do we do what we can. Like our group is something that I can manage, but it would be great mm -hmm. to see it on a bigger scale and maybe yeah. different age groups. You know, elementary, junior high age groups, high school, and have you know. But it's just, it's hard because it I, I need, you need to have lots of, yeah, you need people to be passionate about it and have time. Teachers absolutely need to have that training, mm -hmm. that First Nations awareness training. Um, I was fortunate many, many years ago in a different, different environment, I was able to be trained. It just gave me a really great basis for, uh, growing my empathy and my knowledge um, and I've just been like through different things it's just my toolbox and my knowledge has just gotten and there's so much more like Tiana said you, you're, you're always learning mm -hmm. but I think having that uh, education to teachers is really really important having those opportunities for them to learn blanket ceremonies you know different things um, is really super important for them because then um, they're the ones that are the first, you know, the front line. They're working with these kids all the time, yeah. every day. Like, just like more access to, like traditional practices would be great. Like <laughs> having an elder come to our school yeah. more consistently, like having an elder available, is something we're working towards. Because yeah. I really think that that is super important. Yeah, I think and things like, like that, right? And yeah. like, and if like. Yeah, basically having an elder come so then we can like learn more because there are like some schools that I know of that um, have brown dances at their mm -hmm. school. Like having that at our school would be great. So if we like somehow learned how to do that and incorporate that into like just activities that we do at our school, that would be. Well, and we've had round dancing at our school uh, for like um, Aboriginal Other Celebration Day, day but mm -hmm. I think I think what, what you're saying and I think what would be cool is like for you guys to do it yeah. because we have dancers in the school. We have like in every grade, there are ribbon dancers like or sorry, jingle dress. J jingle dress, fancy dress. There are like chicken. Dancers, yeah. Like there's all, dancers. and there's drummers. There's yeah. like, we have different, different uh, talents. So having them showcase that um, would be really cool. Now it's, Again, getting them confident enough to yeah. do it in front of their friends and student body, but that would be neat mm -hmm. to showcase and to have.
make it like it so it's not a weird thing, like it's mm -hmm. a normal thing. Yeah. We're going to do a round, round dance. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be cool.